Therefore, it's time for members' statements. The member from Niagara West Campbell. Speaker, I was born in the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital in Grimsby, as were many of the residents of Niagara West Glanbrook. The care provided by the physicians and health care professionals of that hospital is second to none in Ontario. They deserve support and honest, genuine consideration. But throughout the campaign, and since I was elected a couple of weeks ago, I've heard grave concerns raised by physicians in my riding and from health care providers across the province about Bill 41, the so-called Putting Patients First Act. No. Could there possibly be more of a misnomer, Speaker? It's a terrible speech. Bill 41 threatens the quality of health care provided to my constituents and puts patients last. It does. To borrow a military analogy, Speaker, our health care system needs more teeth and less tail. That's but Bill 41 is going in the opposite direction, hurting patients, hampering doctors, and harming our health care system. Our government has a duty toward its doctors, a responsibility to hold open, honest, and genuine consultations. With Bill 41, we see once again the symptoms of a failing government, a government playing politics with people's health. Ontario's patients and my neighbours in Niagara West Glanbrook deserve better. Hear, hear. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure to rise today on behalf of my constituents of Windsor West. Speaker, the downtown mission in Windsor is critical to the health and credibility of our community. It provides safe accommodation, meals, clothing, and training to individuals struggling with poverty and homelessness. The programs and services provided by the mission make Windsor a safer, healthier, and more inclusive place, but it's the people working and volunteering at the mission that make this all possible. I would like to thank all of those working and volunteering at the mission for their hard work and dedication. In particular, I want to highlight the commitment of Ronald Dunn. Ron is a strong leader, mentor, and is able to affect change in the greater community. He is a collaborator and always willing to speak up on behalf of the disenfranchised and those living in poverty. When Ron noted an increase in demand for services at the mission because of the high cost of hydro, he did not hesitate to speak out. He is a true champion for those living in poverty. Ron doesn't do his job for monetary gain, awards, or accolades. Rather, this is something he thinks of as his duty, his calling, each and every day. Speaker, the person who is always there for people through their most difficult times is himself going through a difficult period. Ron lost his mother this week, and his father is re in the ICU recovering from a serious illness. I think I speak on behalf of all those in Windsor when I say we are here for you, Ron, and thank you for all that you do. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Mississauga, Arendale. No, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is with great pleasure that I address the Ontario Legislature today. My riding of Mr. Garendale is eagerly awaiting the completion of a vital resource centre for our community. Children suffering with learning disabilities, autism, and host of other challenges will be able to attend the new state-of-the-art Erin Oak facility after it opens early in the new year. Children and families in need who live in Peel region will now have Ontario's largest treatment centre available to them within their own community. The challenges that these families face cannot be understated, and it, it is places like Aaron or Kids that help alleviate some of this stress. Mr. Speaker, I have toured the construction of the centre and spoken with the wonderful staff that are making this facility is soon to be reality. This is a practical, comprehensive, and most importantly, compassionate project that is directed specifically to children and families who otherwise may not have this support. Erin Oak Kids anticipates serving approximately 5,000 children and their families each year from this site, which will be about 20% of the caseload. All field area MPPs worked hard to keep this project on top of the capital project list. I salute their efforts in helping to make a positive difference in both the community as well as countless youth and families that Aaron Oak Kids will positively affect. I also want to thank the government, our government, for having the foresight to make this project reality. Great thank you, Mr. Speaker. Great member statements, the member from St Stormont, Dundas, and South Bengary. Thank you, Speaker. Over the next few months, the Upper Canada District School Board and other school boards across Ontario could come to an ill-advised and harmful decision to close rural schools in many communities, including my own. 
Rural school, closing rural schools and busing students long distances to overcrowded schools is not the answer. Local schools allow our children to grow and thrive while providing them with community spirit, pride, and sense of belonging. Good local schools provide fantastic education opportunities and give students a chance to participate in activities close to home. Lagan Public Schools, serving children in Glengarry County, is ranked the number one school in Canada or in Ontario by the Fraser Institute. Parents, students, and municipal councils from across the province demand a moratorium on the current flawed accommodation reviews. Mm -hmm. The minister must show uh, leadership and work with all stakeholders to implement a sustainable funding formula for rural schools. It's not too late for the Minister of Education to act and to do what's right. And, Speaker, I'm really proud of the communities that have come together right across SDNG to, uh, to work uh, to show the, the leadership to keep our schools open and are working with the art communities, and they're really working as a team. So uh, we look forward to uh, January. We hope that the, uh, the schools are um, uh, the government actually acknowledges the importance of these rural schools and how well they're doing. As I mentioned, Lagan, uh, Williamstown Public, these schools are ranking some of the top in the, in the country and in the province. And it's not something that we need to close because we need better service. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Essex. Thank you, Speaker. I, I rise to uh, pay tribute to a longtime friend of our family uh, and a longtime activist in the community of Essex. Her name was Diane Colantonio, a uh, constituent of mine, longtime social activist in our community, passed away uh, peacefully on November the 18th. Diane was a teacher in special education within the city of Windsor. Her love of teaching continued as she became involved in the children's program at the Maidstone Bicentennial Museum and volunteering with the 4-H Club for over 30 years. She worked uh, in various county fairs, speaker across the county of Essex. She worked for Elections Canada as a poll clerk and as a volunteer for Statistics Canada. She was inducted into the Essex County Agricultural Hall of Fame in 2006, recognizing Diane's contributions as a, as a third generation farmer. She is a past president of her local's Women's Institute and a past president of the Essex County 4-H Leaders Association. Diane has been a 4-H leader with the membership for of over 30 years. Diane was also a member of the Farm Safety Association and an integral part of the Pizza Project that promoted market-to-market -market, uh, programs. Many of Diane's family, friends, uh, of course, will miss her dearly. My sincere condolences go out to her family, Nunzio, Butch, her husband of 48 years, her children, Chris, Mark, and Nancy, and grandchildren, Mark Jr. and Alexandra. Uh, Diane was an integral component of our community. She made our community a better place, and we certainly will miss her. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Speaker. If you visit my riding, you may see on the streets of Waterloo Region a very unusual sight. It's a black Lincoln MKZ car that drives itself. This autonomous vehicle, the first to be legally allowed on Ontario roads and all of Canada for that matter, has been affectionately named the Autonomous by the University of Waterloo engineering students who are driving this pilot program. Now, a few weeks ago, I was joined by our Minister of Transportation at a test track with the students, administrators, local elected representatives, and a large gathering of media as the Autonomous drove us hands-free. This 10-year pilot program is being made possible by BlackBerry QNX Software, Kitchener-based Irwin Heimer Group, and the province of Ontario. Speaker, this cutting-edge car is equipped with a laser scanner on the top that spins around with information being fed to a computer in the trunk, which helps to navigate the car. We know that automated vehicles hold out promise for safer roads, less traffic, less pollution, and expanded research and development. Because of this government's support and insight, we are leading the way in all of Canada in this area. But I will say, Speaker, that it was a bit disconcerting to be riding in this vehicle and the student sitting in the driver's seat did not have his hands on the wheel. But disruptive technology will do that. It'll make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. However, I say anything that frees me from having to parallel park is a good thing. Speaker, automated vehicles, a supply chain is coming. We want to have those jobs here in the province of Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. I stand to recognize Kitchener resident Steve Sanderson for his efforts to open up hockey opportunities to children who cannot otherwise afford it. 
efforts that saw him earn the Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship this weekend. And while congratulations go out to every one of this weekend's 19 recipients, I'll take a few moments to express the thanks in our community to Steve for the Panther hockey program he launched back in 2002. Speaker, it was 14 years ago that Steve Sanderson, the head custodian at Pioneer Park Public School in Dune, began wondering what he could do to help students unable to afford enrolling in hockey. Those thoughts sparked the idea for the Panther Hockey Program, a school-based hockey initiative that provides all the equipment, the ice time, free of charge to interested students between grades one and six. The program started out with donations from family and friends in the school community, but it wasn't enough, and so Steve purchased the extra. Speaker, I'm happy to say that the program has grown to the point where there are now 145 participants. And in the past year, Panther Hockey received 20 full sets of equipment from the NHLPA, along with a practice assisted by former NHL player and Guelph Storm Hockey Club head coach Scott Walker. Steve plans to keep building the Panthers program and is always seeking keen volunteers to keep the skates moving and, of course, the sticks on the ice. And so, Speaker, I would like to, on behalf of all of us here and those in the extended Panther family, a big thank you to Steve Sanderson, a custodian, a Panther, and a good citizen of Ontario. Thanks, Steve. Hear, hear. Thank you. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Kingston and the Islands. Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to share the exciting announcement that Feihu International from China has recently selected Kingston and the Islands as their new home, and this spring they will be building a brand new 40-acre $250 million infant formula manufacturing facility in my community. Yes. <laughs> Fehu's innovative goat milk based formula has an outstanding reputation and is admired in China and other markets for its hypoallergenic properties. At a reception last week, I welcomed Vice Chairman Roger Liu and Vice President Judy Tu and their team from China. Vice Chairman Liu expressed his appreciation for all stakeholders, levels of government, and partners involved in bringing this historic announcement and investment to Kingston. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the reception, welcome, uh, and multi-level governmental co cooperation that FEHA received from our community was one of the very reasons why they chose Kingston and the Islands from among many other cities in North America. I'm grateful to Minister Leal and to our Premier for their warm welcome and discussions which, which took place in meetings here at Queen's Park. Mr. Speaker, this is the building of a stronger, better Ontario in action, and this historic investment will see 200 full-time positions created. It is my honour to welcome Feyo to Kingston and to thank them for their confidence in their new city. We look forward to this monumental announcement turned into legendary success. Thank you. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Halliburton, Kortha Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today on behalf of my constituents in Kortha Lakes to express their profound frustration with the wind government's failure to follow their own processes when it comes to their pet wind turbine projects. The Settlers Landing and Sumac Ridge projects in my riding were forced on unwilling communities and are only serving to drive up electricity prices and degrade the local environment. The Minister of Energy recently admitted that signing 20-year contracts for renewable energy projects that specified a technology was, quote, arbitrary and led to suboptimal siting, uncompetitive prices, and heightened community concern. And yet the government still approved wind turbine construction this past summer at the Sumac Ridge project. They did this after the required date of completion of the project had passed and without the Minister of Environment having fulfilled his statu statutory requirement of responding to a direct appeal from local residents. That appeal has been outstanding for over 18 months. In the meantime, the government has spent taxpayers' money fighting ERT appeals made by citizens, steamrolled over municipalities by taking planning authority away from them, industrialized the Oak Ridge's moraine instead of protecting it. The Minister of Energy put a stop to the LRP2 projects due to the power not being needed in the province, and my constituents are wondering why the Settlers Landing and Sumac Ridge wind projects still are still going forward. The minister should reply to local residents' appeals under the Environmental Protection Act to stop these harmful and precedent-setting projects from proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Well, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. I beg